Before we get into it, uh, Melbourne just finished. Thank you if you came to the show's loosebeers.com, my 2024 tour on the 10th and 11th of next month, May. I'm in Sydney, then I'm in Newcastle on the 19th, then Gold Coast on the 31st. Then we've got Hobart and Launceston, uh, Adelaide, Ballarat, Warrnambool, and Shepparton. UK announced soon, Brisbane. We actually just got dates, so that'll be on sale maybe even by... The time you're listening to this, loosebeers.com, get your tickets, enjoy the show. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 333 of the Spearhead Sundays podcast on manifesting 10,000 Patreon supporters, 10,000 Patreon supporters, 10,000 goth bitches. We're, this is the manifesting episode. If you have anything that you really want in your life, that you really want to manifest into your life, write it in the comments section below and it will happen. Because if there's anything I know about uh, girls with dyed hair, every time you see a number repeated more than twice, it's an angel number, all right? And that's, this is the angel number. I mean, we're not going to get another angel number until episode 666 and that's bad. Nah, 444. Oh, yeah. So... (laughs) 111 episodes from here. In 111 episodes. That's an angel number. Oh my God. That's an angel number. Wow. So what you need to write down now in the comment section below is what you're manifesting. So me, I'm manifesting 10,000 Patreon supporters, 10,000 Patreon supporters, 10,000 goth baddies. And... And you need to write down in the comment section what you're manifesting, and I guarantee it, it'll come true. Keelan, what are you manifesting? I'm manifesting that I can pay my bills this month. <laughs> can I put that in as well as on yeah. one of mine? Yeah, Great. Let's do that. Pay That's my good. bills. Pay my bills. 10,000 patron supporters. Don't let the bank foreclose on my house. Um, and uh, just write down in the comment section, and I guarantee it will come true. Can you please look up um, what 333 means? Because apparently all the different angel numbers, they all have different meanings. And I feel like this is really going to set the tone for not just this episode, but for the rest of the year. The angel number 333 encourages to set plans into action and let your personal strength be your guide to trust yourself and put thought into your choices. Great. The angel number, this angel number can also... Be connected with optimism, uh-huh. creativity, yep. and intuition. Well, that's that sums us up. That's that's uh, that's uh, broad enough to, to for me to take and then and then apply and interpret it as like a, a scalpel that that applies directly to my life and my beliefs. I heard the word creativity in there. I heard the word optimism, and I heard the word plans. So I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna plan to be very creative, and my optimistic. Uh, outcome of that is 10,000 Patreon supporters. I guarantee it happens by the end of the year. Now, do we have 10,000 listeners of the podcast? (laughs) Sometimes. (laughs) Sometimes we do. And you know what? I feel like they were all waiting for episode 333. Welcome to the show. It's going to be a good one. However, I'm going to have to stop now because I need to have, I need my asthma inhaler. Oh, we're back. Almost manifested an asthma attack on the show. Oh, you know, I feel I feel like such a fucking nerd. I feel like such a 30-year-old fucking nerd right now because not only is the weather changing, so all the time I'm going, my inhaler, I need my inhaler. I've also got my fucking retainers in, my teeth. You get the braces off and then they create molds out of your teeth. You've got to wear them 24-7 except for when you're eating. So I'm always like pulling teeth out of my mouth. Hang on. Hang on, guys. I can't go to lunch. I need to take my retainer out. I'm like a fucking 16-year-old virgin every time I go to to dinner. Or every time I want to eat food. I hate it, but I'm going to do it. I'm not going to be one of those fucking people that, oh, I didn't wear my retainer. Why are my teeth fucked? You know, every single person who's had braces has been going, oh, yeah. Good luck. You won't wear that retainer at all. Fuck you. Yes, I will. I wore a CPAP mask every night for two years. It gave me a triangle of acne on my face that looked so bad. It looked like I was wearing women's underwear to sleep on my face. Like dirty women's underwear and it was leaving its mark upon me. 
You know how uh, in the Bible the Antichrist comes and uh, everyone's going to get the, the mark of the beast? I had the mark of the yeast. <laughs> <laughs> and I still wore that shit every day. Oh, yeah, you're probably going to lose your protect. No, I'm not. Although it is looking likely that the dog will eat them. She's very interested in, in the retainer. Every time I take my teeth out, she's like, for me? No. <laughs> Sick of giving my dog. I don't give my dog leftovers anymore. All right. I used to be a big leftovers advocate until I got this dog. Okay. Because every time I give her something, that's not the specially formulated fucking dog food that just so happens to be the most expensive dog food that they sell. She either diarrheas or vomits. Oh, my tummy hurts. You're a dog. Never in my life have I met a more, a, a, a living creature with a more frequently upset tummy. And I've met a few women. You notice that about women? They're, they're always going, my tummy hurts. Oh, I shouldn't have eaten that. Stop eating it. No. Oh, I think I've I think I have uh I think I have an allergy to this food that I constantly eat. Stop. Don't do that. You know? I'm smart enough to know that when the weather changes, I need to rug up, keep my chest warm. All right? Although I I I I don't have much sympathy for people with food allergies because I just I truly honestly wholeheartedly cannot relate. Have you ever heard me complain about a hurt tummy? No. Never once. I, I can eat anything. Have you, you ever heard me complain about a sick tummy? Every single fucking day. <laughs> this, the, you know, I'm, 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 I'm hanging shit on women because that is the most common person who comes out with this. But, but really, this is about Keelan. <laughs> Every day. Oh, I feel sicky. I feel, my tummy hurts. Have you had water? No. Water makes me feel sick. That's what he said to me today. He goes, at breakfast, Keely goes, oh, water makes me feel sick. Oh, okay, that's not what I said. Okay, what did you say? I've been very ill. Yeah. And every time I drink water, I feel very sick. What did you have for breakfast today? A brownie and a coffee. Yeah, and then, and then after the brownie and the coffee, what did you have? Water. No. What did I, a second brownie. Yeah. I, <laughs> <laughs> I haven't eaten a week. I've been throwing up everything I've eaten. Yeah. That's so all right. I, I thought I deserved half a brownie, extra brownie. One and a half brownies. Yeah. yeah. And and good. I'm glad I'm glad you're eating something. But 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 now I feel sick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Every day. I feel sicky. We go out and he gets a fucking massive chocolate milk. Oh my tumby hurts. <laughs> my tumbly's rumbly. You like every listener's girlfriend. <laughs> um what was I talking about? Oh, my fucking dog. I'm off leftovers for the dog. I used, I've had lots of dogs and they've been scrap dogs and I've loved that. Some for me, some for you. The other day I was cooking, right? Making bolognese and uh, some carrot. Like I get it off the stove and I started dishing it up and like a, a piece of carrot fell out of the pot onto the floor. And, you know, I don't want to clean it up. So I'm like, Bobby, I'm over here. And I get her to pick it up and uh, she eats it. And no joke, within two seconds, she starts going, Ugh. you know when they start doing those ones where, the, where your animal turns into a fucking accordion running, running around the house going, oh, what's going on? Like Elon Musk trying to bust a move at a disco floor. Just the, the, the most strange amalgamation of movements you've ever seen. You see Elon Musk on the fucking, did you see Elon Musk on the red carpet? Recently, posing. No. Red carpet, what, what was it for? World's most on-the-spectrum billionaire photo shoot. I don't know. Elon Musk on the red carpet recently. If you search up the video of him posing. Oh, yes. I fuck, think. it's so good. It's so funny. He looks like a Sims character. <laughs> you know the Sims character when you, like, select their personality? Yeah. You know, yeah. where you can go goofy and they'll pull a goofy pose. Or you go or you go evil and they'll go, ah, ha, ha. He looks like he's he's my Sims character in the character development in the character he looks like my he looks like my Sims character in the character creation screen every time we're trying to select a personality for him. 
That's so funny. And you know what? He really thinks that he's he's just being a goofy, silly little guy. And um and no one loves him for it. But I do. I like that about the Elon Musk is um, you know, he'll jump on Twitter and 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 he'll be like, uh, we need to start killing immigrants. And then he'll get on a red carpet and and be like, I'm goofy. You know, he'll just be like, don't worry. I also have the personality of a Reddit forums member. <laughs> um, anyway, I gave a piece of carrot to my dog and immediately she just starts retching. So I go, you know, we've gotten really good at this because she spews every now and then. She starts doing the, doing the, I'm about to spew movements. And I start going, outside, get out! Get out! She runs, but she panics too. She's like, I have to get outside. I have to get outside. So instead of going to the closest fucking door to the kitchen, she instead goes downstairs to the bedroom to get to the door out there. <laughs> Luckily for me, that's the only carpeted area of the fucking house. So she runs down the stairs and I'm, by the way, she runs past me while I've got the outside door open so that she can go to the fucking bedroom to get to the other door that I'm not at and is also closed. So I've got the fucking door open going, outside, outside. She runs past me. I'm like, no, no, come here, come here. She starts turning around. Halfway through turning around, she just starts to spew. So she ends up just spinning in circles, blowing chunks fucking everywhere. All over the fucking carpet. And now I'm freaking out going, oh my God, is, is carrot poison? Did I not know that carrot's poison to dogs? So I start frantically Googling while she's outside finally spewing up the rest of it. Going, oh my God, I've killed my dog. Because it was such a quick reaction. She had, she had carrot and within four seconds, Ugh. what's wrong with my cooking? So I Google it anyway. Nothing wrong with carrot for your dog. But the problem was the temperature of the food. Apparently, with some dogs, if you give them hot food, they'll just instinctively vomit immediately. Why? I don't know. Oh, this is hot. I should evacuate my the entire contents of my stomach. That's what she did. She had a bit of hot carrot. And it was very hot because it fell straight out of the pot on the floor and then she... She did one of those ones where like, you know, when your dog picks up something hot off the ground and they like, oh, this is too hot. I shouldn't chew it. I'll just swallow it. <laughs> you know, which like most, most creatures would be like, oh, this is too hot. I just won't. I'll spit it out of my mouth. I'll wait two seconds. But dogs are just like. <gasps> and apparently it was too hot for her insides too. So she vomited up her breakfast that she had two hours beforehand. Thanks, mate. So no more leftovers for Bob. Absolutely none. And I'm manifesting that she never spews again because this is the manifesting 10,000 Patreon supporters, all of them goth bitches. Um, <laughs> I had my shows last weekend, uh, Friday, Saturday in Melbourne. Uh, and also by the time you're listening to this, unless you're a Patreon supporter, one of the 10,000, um, I will have done my final two Melbourne shows, which uh, I'm manifesting were a roaring success, standing ovations. Um, at both the final two Friday and Saturday shows. Standing ovations, um, everyone just getting out their phones, signing up to Patreon on the spot, um, and then everyone leaving with a merch and tipping on the way out, um, which, which, by the way, is encouraged, and everyone does. And if you don't do it, you're weird. Um, you, know what we're gonna, you know what I'm going to start doing at my shows? I'm going to start, you know, like at church, when they, like halfway through the sermon, they start passing a bowl around. <laughs> Fuck, that'd actually be a really good one. That would be, funny. That would be very funny to have, to have like, but you have, you, you plant audience members on the end of the, uh, on, on like each end of the, the seating aisle. So like they put in 20 bucks and then they just hand it to the person next to them and look at them expectantly. That's a fucking, that's a really good bit. It's just halfway through the show. We just start passing around bowls, start playing gospel music. Um, <clears throat> anyway, what was I talking about? I'd have my shows. Oh, they were fucking awesome. Dude, the venue that I'm doing is really good. The lead beater. It's a, such a good venue. It's been probably one of the, I, I'd say it's the best venue that I've done in the Melbourne comedy festival. Cause Melbourne comedy festivals. Oh, I really like the rubber chicken. 
But this one is like, it's more of a, it's more of a rock venue and rubber chickens closed now as well. But I'd say it's probably the best. Like if you look at the clips that I've been posting, the, the lighting is so good. The sound system is fucking awesome. Apparently it's like an $80,000 lighting system in there. Um, the new, uh, one of the guys who works there is just buying it from the previous owner. And, uh, oh. Yeah, yeah, he's he's buying it, and uh, obviously this is his first time running comedy shows as like kind of the boss, and he's been stoked with it. So it's been really fun, and the the crowds have been so good, and dude, it's it's so different and so much better performing without braces, so much better. I don't know if you guys watched the video that I put up on my channel about the the time I got pranked, but I, as I was watching it back, editing it, dude, I was fucking spraying. <laughs> spitting everyone with the braces on I was just spitting and spraying and blasting the front row and because it's under hot lights you can see it like shoot out I look like the who's the who's the fucking wrestler that sprays the water is that Triple H that sprays the water I don't know I can look it up I don't know. one of the wrestlers does that or maybe I'm thinking of Stone Cold Steve Austin he does that with beer I think he smashes his head on the on the beer can and then takes a drink and then spews it in, spits it in the air. That's like me performing, but without the muscles or the beer. But, uh, dude, performing without them is so much easier. Like my whole face has relaxed. I think that like in Perth, I think I talked about it in either the podcast or the vlogs, which are returning. Um, I think after every show, cause I did 12 shows. I think in Perth, uh, after every show, I was bleeding on the inside of my mouth just because of my face like rubbing against the braces and yelling and making facial expressions, performing, you know. But this time, no pain uh, on the inside of my mouth and also no muscle fatigue either because so much of my mus muscle energy was being directed to like moving my face around the braces without the pain. I don't have that at all anymore. <clears throat> so... So good. Also, it's become very apparent to me um, that I'm, I've actually become quite handsome. Sorry, guys. The era of ugly spears is over. I'm quite handsome now. <laughs> See, I can do stuff like that and, I, and, and it'll be cute instead of gross. You know? I'm going to start getting fan cams made of me. Here's how I know. All right. I got on stage. And I obviously do a little bit of material about looking different. I was hearing some woos that I've never heard in my life. I was hearing some, some female cries in the audience that I've never, in my 12 years of doing this, ever heard in my career. <clears throat> I was getting some horny woos. Never gotten that in my life. The era of ugly spears, it's fucking over. It's currently over for you. How funny is it? Was it trying to get in here with like all of the, all of the girlfriends and mothers and grandmothers uh -huh. outside? Yeah, it was tr tr tricky. It was. It was really tough. I for some reason I got let in really easily, but you struggled. You were like five ten minutes behind me. Yeah, you should have seen Keelan. He was like Moses parting the Red Sea. <laughs> Uh, but I struggled a bit. Like you probably, I don't know if you guys can hear, but they're actually bashing on the windows. We've soundproofed the studio. We're in the new studio, um, and it's it's less soundproof, more like an underground uh, woman-proof bunker because this this is just the security. Um, you know the, the the way that we have to operate now with this, with the security. Like obviously, when you've got a face like I do um, and a jaw as expensive as mine, you do have to protect it from ravenous women, who many of whom are married. Um, I mean, I hear that's why Gypsy Rose broke up with her fiance uh, because she heard about my chin. Mm. And uh, I mean, if, if you look at her, 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 she could deal with a chin in her life. <laughs> um, hey man, she killed her mum. No, 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 her mum deserved it. Good on her. She's having a crack. Proud independent woman. Gypsy Rose, I'm loving her new development. What's happening with her now? She's got, she, she did have a husband. Did she get married or was she engaged? She got married. So she, she gets out of prison and... Day one, she, because we were talking about the best thing possible for her 
would be for no one to give her a smartphone and for no one to tell her that she's become famous while she's been in prison. Because the last thing that this girl needs is to be famous. Like, talk about the most traumatic, triggering shit ever. If you don't know, Gypsy Rose, uh, her mother had uh, Munchausen by proxy, which is a, a, a mental illness where you convince the world that your child is very, very sick. So some people, like we had a very, we had a very famous case of it in uh, in Australia, where a woman pretended to have cancer and then defrauded a bunch of charities and a bunch of people. Uh, I think she made an app and sold it because she cured her cancer with holistic medicine, and she scammed a bunch of people with actual cancer out of their money and gave them false hope. Evil woman. Um, but it's like that. But you do it to your child. So not only is this evil woman convincing doctors. Uh, charities, friends, neighbors, people in the community that her daughter is deathly ill. She's also convincing from birth the child itself that they're ill. And so eventually Gypsy Rose starts to figure out, this is after she's gone under many unnecessary surgeries, had all of her teeth removed. She has her head shaved. She's told that she can't walk. She lives her whole life in a wheelchair. She doesn't go to school, all this kind of stuff. Um, Eventually, Jesse Rose gets uh, a boyfriend and convinces the boyfriend to kill her mom. Uh, and they do that together because she saw no way of escaping because once she did escape and then the mother kind of kidnapped her and took her back. So it's like, that's the backstory. But a really cool TV show came out about it, which Keelan and I thoroughly enjoyed, uh, that made her very famous before she got out of prison. Now she's out of prison and she's famous and she is fucking loving the intention. Keelan loves her. I love her. Keelan loves playing clips of Gypsy Rose. Can't bring me down. I'm Can't on a high bring right me now. down. I'm on a high right now. I, I found this article. Insider close to Gypsy Rose has shared the wild reason she split from husband. Right. So she came out of prison. She immediately gets married to this 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 uh, big chumbus looking fella, uh, and uh, just starts publicly oversharing about their sex life, how how the D is fire, <laughs> all this stuff. Now they're divorced. Now they're divorced. What's going on there? TMZ claims that Gypsy Rose's ex-husband, Ryan, had hoarding issues when it came to food, leading to major fights between the pair. <laughs> what do you mean? He's a big bloke. What is a hoarding issue with food? Is that like, no, give me that carrot. That's mine. <laughs> TMZ claims Gypsy discovered that Ryan's fridge was stacked with expired food items. So she did what most people would do and threw them away. Since Ryan wasn't there at the time, cracks started to appear when he returned home and discovered the cleared out fridge. Hey, I was going to chew on that expired milk. <laughs> the- I wasn't finished with that cheese. <laughs> it's growing. It's a science experiment. Oh, come on, babe. That fucking butter chicken was sentient. <laughs> the insider alleges this incident led to a huge argument between the pair that left Gypsy Rose feeling shaken. The source adds that she couldn't believe he got so worked up about a fridge. There's more. The only thing... Who the fuck is hoarding expired food? Is he... Is he, like, uh... Is he collecting, like, memorabilia? Like, branded food? Some people do that. Like, the Simpsons Special K collection? I don't know. This wasn't the only thing that bothered Gypsy. (laughs) Okay. Ryan's snoring allegedly became too much for Gypsy to handle at night. And while she prefers to be in a colder bed, her ex's body heat is apparently like a human furnace. Right. So what he, what she's upset about is that, is that she's in a relationship with a very obese man where, where he has horrific sleep apnea (laughs) and sleeping next to him is like sleeping next to me two years ago. <laughs> and then the cunt's so fat that he heats up the whole bed. Uh, but not only that, because he's so heavy, uh, the bed tilts and, and she rolls into him. Yeah. Right. See, I think that's what ha- that's just what happens when you uh, marry the first guy that looks up at you after you get out of prison for murdering your mother. You know? Like, I feel like, and obviously she herself is a victim of, of abuse, but if I was to give uh, uh, my advice to Gypsy Rose, anyone who's interested in you before you got out of prison uh, is very suspect. 
All right. Any dude that looks like, looks at a girl that is just like a victim of manipulation, child abuse, all this kind of stuff, and looks at you and like, yeah, I want her like fresh out of prison. Like after she got out of the prison built by her mother and then goes into a prison built by the state and then enters into a marriage with some dude that she just met in real life. I'm not saying all of them, but that guy's like very suspect of like, oh yeah, I want a woman that I can just fucking control. To the point where if she throws out some cheese that has been growing legs, that's how long it's been in the fucking fridge. I'm going to yell at her. That's so funny. What's funny about that is like, those are really legitimate reasons to break up with a boyfriend, but very silly reasons to to uh, divorce your husband over. You know what I mean? Because you because you should know who you marry before you marry them. <laughs> That's awesome. Is there anything else? Anything about her current sex life? I saw because the last the last thing I saw before this was she was actually taking a break from social media. Yeah. So now she's back on social media oversharing about her divorce and her, her food hoarding ex husband. It doesn't really I can't really find anything um like uh, solid or concrete about what is actually happening. It's all just allegedly um, like just people telling TMZ things. Right. She hasn't broken her silence. Oh, so she but is off social media. He isn't doing well. Ryan right. Anderson is not doing well, according to TMZ. Yeah, he lost He lost a, He lost lost a. a gem there, you know. But he got his 15 minutes. Yeah, he did. You know, so like... That's, I, I would say that's the best gift an ex can give you. Like Ariana Grande did for Pete Davidson. Yeah. Dumping you and going, yeah, but the dick is good. Like that's, what a gift. Take that, use it how you will. Um, clean your fucking fridge, you animal. How long have we been going here, Keelan? 30 minutes-ish. Right. Um, <clears throat> I want to talk about uh, this uh, Marcus Brownlee. Uh, situation where he uh, he reviewed this product that I actually took the piss out of four months ago on my YouTube channel called the the Humane AI Pin, which is supposed to be some kind of wearable device that you pin onto your T-shirt or clamp onto your T-shirt or whatever you're wearing. It's got a little camera on it. It's got AI in it. It's uh, got like a little laser light thing that shines. So there's no screen. It's not like a phone. Instead of that... You kind of put your hand out and you operate it by gesturing with your hand and it will display the time or like directions or whatever the fuck. But basically it's like a little chat GPT cube that you wear on your chest. And th the video that I made was about their presentation of the product that really said nothing about what the product did. It was the most confusing unveiling of a brand new tech item ever it costs seven hundred dollars plus a monthly fee to subscribe to chat gpt so it's not even their own ai software that they've built it's like a, it's basically like a fucking seven hundred dollar phone app that connects to chat gpt that has no screen and has like a, a shit webcam on your tits you know it's like a it's like a bad body cam that police wear except Unlike police, it actually refuses to be racist. <laughs> That's a good one. I might write that down. Um, and anyway, I came out and I, I trashed it, but Mark As Brownlee, the biggest uh, tech reviewer on YouTube, came out and he released a video that uh, called it the worst product he's ever reviewed in his career so far. And basically has the same criticisms that every single person on the internet had just from watching videos about it, uh, as well as agreeing with people who actually bought the product, saying that, I mean, yeah, it just doesn't do what you want it to do. It doesn't replace the phone. It's like a little, it's it's really slow. It's unbelievably expensive and it has a monthly fee. And it's just kind of hard to operate and it's not useful in any way that would replace your phone kind of like what they were promising it would do. And the controversy is everyone is kind of dogpiling on Marcus, Marcus Brownlee 
saying that he's like destroyed this company by making this very negative review and they're calling him out for destroying this company and for being too mean about this product uh, and kind of the criticism is, oh, they're working on it. Like you need to kind of believe in the idea of what it will eventually become. Which is such a fucking stupid argument because if I spend $700, I want something that works in my hands. I'm not giving you $700 to create a Generation 5 product that's so much better that I'll also have to buy. Like that's that's what an investor does. You know, if I'm buying the product, I'm a consumer. I'm not an investor. I'm buying the thing that you've told me is supposed to work and be a good product. So if it's not a good product, a bad review doesn't kill the company. The product has. And also the thing with reviewers, especially a guy like Marcus Brownlee, he's like, he's very fair. He, he doesn't really release, I don't know, I wouldn't even call it a negative review. I would call it an honest review. Like he, he said what was good about it. He said what was bad about it. And there just happened to be way more bad things. And he was honest that it's kind of a useless thing to have. It's not what the designers even want it to be. And I think it's like this this whole thing of like all these tech bro people on fucking Twitter just having a go at him. Like, oh no, AI devices are actually really good. And like, look, they will be. But the, it, that, one, that one device is not right now. And that's the product that he's reviewing and it costs fucking $700. And people are also saying like, oh, if you have a really, really negative review, you just shouldn't release it. Or you should kind of pad it out to make it seem less negative. But then if you have a review channel and there are, there are a bunch of review channels out there. There are a bunch of journalists out there. There are heaps of game websites out there that only release really positive reviews. And if you're only saying positive shit about every single thing you review, you're useless. You're completely useless to the people consuming the reviews. Uh, And often worse than that, you're actually a liar uh, and you're being dishonest because not everything is good. Because... The thing about reviews, especially like YouTube reviews, they're actually, they're not, they're obviously not for the people making the product. They're for the potential consumer. Like how often are you about to make an expensive purchase? Like anything over like, anything over like $150, I'm looking at a review, let alone something that costs $700. So like in Australian money, about $1,200. Anything over $1,000, I'm watching at least like two or three reviews from creators that I trust. And I'll also go on Reddit and see what's like just random people say about the thing to make my decision. Uh, And if there are people that only make positive reviews about things, I'm going to buy it. And not only do I feel lied to about the person who's made the product, now I've been ripped off. I also will never trust the reviewer ever again. If they like say, oh yeah, I really like how it's square and small and uh, the build quality is nice. And then they say nothing about how the product actually functions and if it's even useful. It's like, yeah, dude, you're useless. So Marcus Brownlee's come out and he's kind of like made a response to the response to his review and going, yeah, dude, this is ridiculous. I'm a, I review products and I'm honest. And what's really funny about it is all these people are super upset with him and it's kind of going viral and all these people are really criticizing him. Even other reviewers. The guys who made the fucking product that he's reviewing have thanked him. They've gone, oh, thanks heaps. We're going to take your feedback and we're going to make a better product. And that's how, that I mean, that's the, that's the other purpose of reviews is not only does it help consumers decide whether or not they should purchase something, it actually helps creators create a better product. The original video he made is already at 5.6 million views. Well, why did my video do terribly? Sometimes, sometimes you can be too early to a topic. 
Four months ago I did this. It better fucking pick up now. I feel like I'm I'm either I'm either three weeks late to everything that I cover or four months too early. <laughs> I'm like I'm like the world's worst time traveler. <laughs> Yeah, we made that uh, the guy who wants to live forever video, and that kind of didn't do f- super flash, but that was kind of old. But then, like a month after you uploaded it, now he's every- big. Everyone's talking about him now. Again. Everyone's talking about it. No, I think I think the the only reason why the the channel's not getting as many views is because I'm not being consistent with the uploads, which I do plan to uh, to fix now. A uh, little update with what's going on with me. We're at, we're now in the new studio um, that's uh, all set up and all painted. Um, so the videos that I've been putting out have been in like the old, really cramped space, but now this one is uh, a much better space uh, for filming and also for editing. Um, so I'm really, really, uh, aiming to just kind of knuckle down and, and smash out as many videos as I can for YouTube. Um, and I really kind of want to come back in a big way there and I'm, and I'm feeling really good about it. Um, and that's why I'm saying this on episode 333 because I'm manifesting. And you can manifest Patreon. Yeah, orders. and Patreon is is absolutely the way, absolutely the way that we're gonna um, really come back in a big way. Because if you don't know now, Keelan's a volunteer. Like he's here just as my mate, and we love that. But uh, I don't have the time to create the YouTube videos that as many YouTube videos as I know that I could because I can't afford to pay Keelan. <laughs> so uh, we're just here for fun. Just two, just two mates hanging out while the record button's going. Passion project. It, sure. This this really is a passion project. Absolutely. Um, so if you want to support what we're doing and jump on Patreon, you get uh, an extra episode every single week, access to the Discord server uh, where we're uh, all doing our fitness challenges and there's a bunch of other little channels that are going on. Um, that is really fun. Um, and also, well, we actually, we can't talk about this because we have to talk about this on the Patreon episode, but we do need to, we do need to make a full... Um, apology video for our Patreon supporters because something that we said in the previous episode was just so unbelievably wrong that <laughs> and, we need to apologize. And said with such confidence. And said with such confidence for how long did that go for? It went, we were talking about it for about 20 minutes. About 20 minutes and uh, neither of us Googled it. Actually, we did Google it. Still wrong. And so. I, I went to a wedding that night yeah. and I was telling everyone... <laughs> I was going, you would not believe. I told, I told my mum. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. We'll talk about that. That's that's up right now on Patreon. Um, all right. So you know how last episode, was it last episode we were talking about the Jojo Siwa song? Yeah, last episode. I said on that episode, I said, I feel like this would be a really good song if it was sung by someone else. Yes. If the production was completely different. How's this? The original singer of the song has released their version and it's so much better. What do you mean the original? So this is obviously even this singer that's put it out, uh, she didn't write it. So this song was like floating around and was pitched to a bunch of stars. And then so many people said no so many times in a row that it eventually made its way down to fucking Jojo Siwa. <laughs> and she got it. And she never claimed to write the song. A lot of people are saying she stole the song from this other girl. But this other girl, I don't think, even wrote the song either. And they both kind of paid for it. And that's how it works. So anyway, it kind of... The, the original version or the first version of this song, Surface, sung by another woman who's a lot older than Jojo Siwa, has come out. Uh, and that was floating around on TikTok. So then that woman capitalized on it, shot a music video and released it officially on her Spotify and it's crushing it. People are loving it. It's so much better. And people are trying to make it more popular than Jojo Siwa's song, (laughs) which is really mean, but quite funny. It's really good. Try and find it. Do you know the name? I mean, I assume it has the the same song name. I think that's her, yeah. And it's... Because the, the Jojo Seal one, it's got, she's screaming in it. It's got the sound of fucking alarms going off. This other woman's version is great. I don't know if we can actually play it on the podcast. Maybe not. We'll see. We might edit this out. Oh, oh brother. I'm so poor. I can't afford premium. You, no, no YouTube premium on this bro. It, um, it only Loser. Only happened last night. Yeah. 
That sucks. Any good ads? What, what are you advertising? Motion Array. Oh, I love Motion we Array. We should get a sponsorship. We should get, for we should get a sponsorship for Motion Array. You know, um, Raid Shadow Legends reached, emailed me this morning, and I'm going to do it. Nice. Yeah. Okay. All right. So much better. It's good. It says... This song was originally recorded by Miley Cyrus in 2011. Yes. So Miley turned it down as well. Isn't this better? Yeah, that's Miley great. Miley Cyrus would have crushed it. Miley Cyrus would have crushed it because she would not have needed the auto-tune. Like, she would have cr- smashed that live. Now I want now I want to hear the Miley Cyrus cover of Jojo Siwa's song that isn't Jojo Siwa's song that's actually Britney Smith's song that isn't even her song. Isn't that crazy how you can just buy like that's something that that I mean to my knowledge doesn't exist in the comedy industry. You can't just buy a mathematic cuz that's the thing. Jokes aren't math. Songs, especially pop songs, it just kind of comes down to math. They've really got it sorted. They've got the key changes. They've got the beats. They've got the the types of things they have to do that just really get the human brain going, oh, I like this. Like most people will go, I can tolerate this at the supermarket. <laughs> Whereas jokes really aren't like that. You can't like, even the best joke by the best comedian, a lot of people will just not like. So you can't just fucking, you can't have a bunch of jokes just floating around the industry and then, you know, Dave Chappelle says no. Joe Rogan says no. All these other great comedians just start saying no. And then the joke makes its way down to me and then I do it, but then some other open micer does it better. <laughs> <laughs> we release our version. We have a giant beef. That's good. Is that one, is in, in, was that a music clip? Is she also scissoring a, a, no. a much better dancer in the music clip? It's uh, pretty indicative of his age. It's got a beat um, product placement. Beats uh, speaker product placement. Yeah, that's great. 2011. Yeah, excellent. That's so interesting that she would choose a song that's already been released to make. I don't think it was released, was it? I think it was it was pre- made and everything produced, but never but never never posted. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, that's that's uh that's crazy. So even even the woman who made it, the label that spent the money on it, Beats who gave the money to put a fucking sponsorship in the music clip. All of them looked at it and were like, ah, let's just, this song's probably better better off as a tax write-off, don't you think? <laughs> um, <clears throat> all right. Now it's time for miscellaneous bit at the end of the podcast, the part of the show where we answer uh, questions sent in by the listener. If you have a question, if you need some life advice, if you have a story to tell me, send it through as an email to podcast at loosebeers.com. All right, this one, we've got the subject line. Your weak chin helped me become a lawyer. Well, this guy's probably failing right now because those days are over. Uh, Dear Lewis, thank you for talking so openly about your illness because it helped me to pass the bar exam. When I graduated law school during COVID, a time when I pretty much stopped sleeping altogether, I proceeded to fail the bar exam three times before passing the fourth. Throughout the first two times I studied, I was working a job with 10 to 11 hour days as a paralegal. I would then drive almost an hour home. Fuck, that's rough. This left me without much time to study and I followed a lot of bad advice to just stay up and study. Basically, suck it up and never sleep. Yeah, that's a big thing that, I mean, when I was healthy enough to do, I also just neglected sleep. I feel like it's a real like um, bad uh, uh, effect of like the hustle culture of like the the grind never sleeps and working hard and people being proud of not sleeping. But it's actually one of the worst things that you can do, not only for your health, but actually for your productivity too. And of course, there are periods of time, like sometimes it, it's even like a month where you just have to go, 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 and you just actually can't stop. But if you're doing that all the time, all year, uh, and they're not. it's not warranted by like an emergency or like a really big opportunity that, that you just have to capitalize on. It's actually horrible for your overall productivity and you end up crashing and burning uh, and getting very sick. Um, 
This didn't work and led me to have anxiety and a pretty massive negative change in personality. I noticed that about myself. The less I slept because the more sick that I became, the more prone I was to like depression, anxiety, um, just like my drive was gone, just feelings of hopelessness kind of became overwhelming at times. It was it was a really, really, really common thing for me that kind of didn't make sense when you looked at what was actually going on in my life. Like I was, uh, what did the doctor call it? Like uh, there's circumstantial depression where it's like, oh, things in your life are very bad and that's why you're sad. And then there's just... Uh, the other kind, which is like, well, you're just fucked. <laughs> um, you're not, you haven't slept for two years. Fast forward to spring 2023. I'm working in a much healthier work environment and listening to Spearhead Sundays. Well, <laughs> there we go. That's that's the end of the email. That's all you need. All right. That's why that's why we're here for episode 333, and that's why 10,000 people are signing up to the Patreon as we speak because it'll actually fix everything about your life if you listen to the show enough. I'm working in a much healthier work environment and listening to Spearhead Sundays, which had recently returned from the long break. Your explanation about how important sleep is to proper brain function smacked me in the face like the football I didn't see coming in eighth grade because I was distracted by the high school girls. Um, uh, long story short, I started to get full nights of sleep. I passed the exam and will be starting my first job as an attorney two weeks from the date of this email. Let's go! We love that! I've also lost about 20 pounds, which after some research, turns out it's super hard to lose weight if you don't sleep. Go figure. There we go. I've been saying this. It's, it's, it, I think it's not necessarily losing weight. I think it's impossible for your body to do anything when you're not sleeping. So for me, my struggle was putting on weight. I could not put on weight. If I ate heaps, if I went to the gym, you know, I used to be a personal trainer. I know how to do this shit. I would do it really, really well for months and I would see fucking absolutely no progress but then after the second surgery when my swelling went down when I started sleeping well even though I was not working out and all of my food was fucking blended slop I was stacking on weight and like good healthy muscle weight because my body was actually resting and able to put all of that protein and calories and energy where it was supposed to go and keep it there um because I was actually fucking sleeping um and also with passing the bar exam uh, that's why cramming at night doesn't work. Like if you've got a test tomorrow, staying up all night fucking studying doesn't work. You're actually better better off doing studying and then getting eight hours sleep because that information that you uh, take in actually stays in your fucking brain. It gets converted into memories and knowledge while you're sleeping. And if you're not sleeping, you're not doing any, you're not learning, you're not retaining any information. Um. I've done a lot of work to find better ways to get proper sleep, like getting an Apple Watch to track how often I wake up through the night. I do that as well. It's been really helpful. Uh, and how much sleep I actually get. I found out I mostly, most likely have a deviated septum. Yes, I have one. Listen to that. That's me all the time. That's the I'm going to get that surgery as well, and then I'm fucking done. But I don't know. Not for like at least a year. I cannot go under again. <laughs> I'm over it. Um... I started wearing nasal strips to, to bed and my sleep improved. Maybe I'll try that. My migraines, which were debilitating, have gone away. I used to have those as well. Uh, my migraines have gone away when nothing else would work. Yes. Uh, so thank you for having a weak chin. Without it, I never would have realized the most obvious thing ever. Well, everything's obvious in hindsight. Uh, it doesn't matter how much effort you put in, you cannot succeed without proper brain function. Yes. I'm so happy that your quality of life has improved since your surgery and thank you for educating your fans on your condition because it improved my quality of life too. Cheers, John. Oh, thank you, buddy. That's very sweet. Man, dude, I cannot tell you the amount of people after shows, men, women, young, old, uh, obese people, small people who've been telling me that they've figured out that they have sleep apnea um, or that they have other issues that were related to poor sleep because of some other sleeping condition that they've gone in and have are getting fixed. It's so fucking cool. And even just people like this who don't necessarily have a condition, but were just, you know, 
doing what they thought they should do, which is like grinding themselves against the wheel <laughs> and not sleeping and thinking that the more I do, the more I'll achieve. It's not actually always true. The The more I have fucking been taking rest, intentional rest, the better I feel and the more excited I am to, to come to work and create things uh, and the better I have been at doing that. Like performing, you know, I've uh, I actually am doing the same show that I did in Melbourne last year. I didn't tour it. So for every other state, it is new. But in Melbourne, uh, it's the same show. So some people have seen it before, which I was really nervous about doing and I've never done before. But I was like, because of the surgeries, I was like, well, either I repeat a show just in Melbourne and it's brand new for everyone else. Or I try and write a new show in like a month, which is fucking impossible, um, just to do it for the first time in Melbourne and then kind of throw away this perfectly good show that no one else has seen just so I don't... So I just was like, I'll, I'll, for the, I'll repeat it in Melbourne. I'll put in the information that it's the same show that some people may have seen. But anyway, so many people who saw the show last year uh, that did come back to the second one were like, I know you said it was the same show, but it was so much fucking better. Like it was so much better. And it is because I'm just... I'm, I'm quicker, I'm sharper... I've noticed that uh, whenever I do crowd work, I'm so much better than I used to be just because I actually think faster and uh, my brain is like awake and active and aware. Whereas before I was in such this, such a fucking fugue state all the time. I had such horrible brain fog and like just like depression and all this other stuff from a lack of sleep that I would get on stage and I would the shows would be good. They'd be they'd be quite good shows. But I would get off stage and I'd be fucking exhausted. You know what's really crazy? And I'm not gonna promise this. I'm definitely not promising this will happen after shows. But I've actually been remembering some people <laughs> when I meet them after. I go, Oh, you've come to a few shows before. And I did this this like I did do a, like because it's Melbourne, I've been doing Melbourne since two thousand fourteen. So like ten years, right? This is my fuck, this is my tenth. Yeah, doing the comedy festival. <laughs> I did it to a couple of people who have seen me like six times in a row and all of them were like, oh, you remember us? <laughs> Which means they've come like six or seven times in a row and I've got no fucking clue who they are. And they go, wow, you remember me? You must be feeling better. <laughs> Which is, and I am. So sleep is unbelievably important. And if you're not getting it, you need to figure out how you can and if everything that you try doesn't work, like me, you need to go to a doctor and ask for a sleep study. And that will tell you if you're actually having, if there's actually a physical reason why you're not getting sleep. Because it's, it's usually physical or mental or a combination of both. For me, it was like physical. Um, and a sleep study will be able to tell you pretty much exactly what's going on. You go to your GP, you ask for a referral to a sleep study, you get that done. You come back to your GP. He'll refer you to, for me, it was a nose and throat specialist. I thought it was my nose because obviously, as you can hear, it's really fucked. Uh, but he was like, dude, no, nah, your throat is way worse. You definitely need, uh, what did he say? He goes, you don't, I'm like, oh, I think I need, I think I have a deviated septum. I know my grandma had one and she got the deviated septum surgery. So I think I need that. And he goes, no, nah, you need a full open rhinoplasty. <laughs> like you need a nose job. It's that bad. But even worse, is your actual airway. It's fucked. And now I'm better. <laughs> um, so yeah, sleep is important. It's so, so, so unbelievably fucking important. Uh, not just to your physical health. Like the most surprising thing to me is my mental health has gotten so much better. And it's just because my brain actually works. Your, your, uh, when you're asleep, that's when your brain actually fucking takes all of your experiences, even the bad things that you experience throughout the day and processes them, puts them away, files them away. And if bad things happen and you're not sleeping, it doesn't get processed and you're stuck in this fucking state. Uh, but also when you're asleep, that's when your brain makes things like dopamine, <laughs> which you can't be happy without. So if you're not fucking sleeping, you're going to be all sad and sooky. So sleep's important. Uh, yes. uh, are you wrapping up? Yes. Okay. I was gonna just gonna say um, for Patreon, shout uh -huh. out to Ryan and Truck Nuts for becoming members. 
Oh, new members? New members. Ryan and Truck Nuts. That's, I don't know whose name I like better. Because there's, because I do, I do, there's something respectable about using the real name, mm. but there's something undeniably awesome about being like, oh, thanks, Truck Nuts. I like Truck Nuts. Yeah, good on you, Truck Nuts. Um, and Logan. And yeah, Ryan, Logan, and Truck Nuts. It's one way to stand out. I, I guess if we do this epi- every episode, there's going to be some horrific names signing up. Maybe we should uh, also do a segment where we just shit on the people who quit, who like uh, canceled their membership. Uh, no, that's all right. Sometimes <laughs> people go through hard times. Uh, <laughs> yeah, fuck, they get... All right, 10,000 Patreon uh, members. And none Tyler of, Green um, upgraded his pledge. That's awesome. Thank you, Tyler Green. All right, we're going to continue on uh, Patreon here because we have a big apology to make. If you know, you know. Coming up now on Patreon. Yes. Fuck. Oh, are you vomiting? Outside! Oh, no! Outside! Oh, so bad! <laughs> Thank you for listening. Uh, Loosebeers.com. Grab your tickets. I'm touring. Uh, I think Sydney is next up. Uh, but yeah, I'll see you there. I hope you have a shit one. Bye.